Show with Money B. Money, Money B. B. Your home for classic hip hop, raw and uncut. 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 Got a great show for you guys today, and of course, I am joined by my lovely co-host Tyne Teasy, bringing hey, you hey, the hey. old school new news and keeping us brothers in check. Now yes. he's early. <laughs> now you're early on the thing. Hey, it got out there, right? And of course, yeah, we appreciate it. Thank you. My silver fox that rocks. <laughs> <laughs> The freckle spectacle. That's what. <laughs> the light skin genie. <laughs> DJ always. What up? What up? Putting it down for you on the ones and twos. How you feeling? What's happening, peoples? How y'all doing? Good. Very so good. as we always do, let's do a roundup. Time, TZ. How was your week? It was good. Um, over the weekend, I just did a bit of a, a bit of nesting, um, organizing, laundry, stuff like that. So. You call it nesting. That's what my doctor called it when I broke down my weekend. So he said, oh, so you're going to be nasty. And I said, yeah, I guess that's what you call it. Are you getting the room together? Um, Yeah, just washing newborn clothes. Yeah. And just organizing and stuff like that. And for, for those of you who don't know, you know, about to bring another one into this world. And, you know, I keep telling Ty and Teezy, if we, we really have great ratings if she was going to pop that thing out while we was on air, right? I don't know. Can, can T-Ready over here handle it? Any guys ever delivered a baby before? <laughs> Not at all. And <laughs> was like, fuck that shit. <laughs> Can't go through with that. It's not happening, huh? Well, well, maybe, you know, do a little walking around the block next next time. Yeah, try to induce that thing. So <laughs> <laughs> next week we can pop it out on air. Man. We can get it documented, put it on the, on the YouTube on channel. On TV. We might have to take one of these. The Go On Way Back show. Make sure <laughs> yeah. you guys subscribe. The subs will go up immensely. <laughs> For real. What about you, Always? What's been happening? <clears throat> Headed up to, um, up to Vallejo. Really? You were you Vallejo? guys were you guys up there this weekend, yes, right? Yes, we were. You were up there this weekend. I was. I ended up going up there for a comedy show with Speedy, and what day? <laughs> what day was you up there? We was up there Saturday. Really? Saturday night over in uh, Fairfield. Fairfield. Yeah, at the downtown theater. I like the way you said. You said Fairfield. Well, I, I was. It's Fairfield. I, Fairfield. Yeah, say it. Say he wasn't cool. sure. Fairfield. Yeah, I wasn't sure, but it's in Fairfield, and uh, dude got up there. We checked in the hotel at the Marriott. Right. Didn't even know next door was the out, all those outlet stores. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Did you go shopping? <laughs> yes. Did you get your daughter anything? No. It was Father's Day. <laughs> <laughs> those are nice. Thank you. And I also got some Drop. sweet drop. He yeah, said it like he bought purses and shit. He's like, oh, my God. <laughs> no, because the first thing I saw was the big Nike swoosh. Okay. So you knew it was a Nike store. Right. So you racked up, didn't you? Yeah, I found two Did pairs of sneakers like for the, 42 uh, bucks. The Levi outlet? Didn't go by there, but went by went by the Under Armour, went by... Um, did we go by the Gap? Did you stop at the White Hat outlet? Nah, I need to get a new one. I need to get a new one. See the spots? I'm just kidding. Right. Well, obviously, <laughs> um, my weekend was pretty eventful, of course. You know, we did the... Um, Third annual Tupac birthday celebration and benefit for the National Alumni. He's checking out the pics. Of the Black Panther Party. And what's crazy is, you know, we did the show, right? But Shock G had a show at the Juneteenth, which was on the same block that Are afternoon. You serious? Right. So he rocking up, you know. An we outdoor show. And yeah, it was an outdoor show, but it was right in front of Yoshi's where we were playing. So, you know, at first you're thinking like, awkward, right? A little bit. Yeah, but but, you know. When Shock saw me, uh, he called me on stage, got on, we rocked out, and then he actually showed up to my my performance or my show later on that night. He didn't really, he didn't stay for the performance, but he came through. Oh, that's cool. He popped in, said what's up. So we rocked out. Sweet. A little bit. So I actually had two shows. Nice. Over the weekend. 
you know? Very nice. I got to do Freaks in the Industry twice. What? You know what I'm saying? Freaks in the Industry. I was getting it in. And, and, and of course, you know, I mean, everybody knows that yesterday was Tupac's birthday. So, That's of right. course, today, you know, we got some really, really special guests. I'll, I'll mention that in a little bit. That's right. But first, let's do it like we do always around this time. Hit it, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not my the fault. old school new news with Tom Teasy. Thanks, man. Okay, so let's start off this week with Andre 3000. Um, he confirmed doing an appearance at the Governor's Ball Festival in <coughs> New York that he will be releasing a new album early 2014. Solo? Yes, wow. solo. Oh, well. All right. That's crazy because I heard that he he was not really comfortable on stage during this this reunion thing. Like he kind of yeah is not about rocking no more. Guess he got out of that, you know. So he overcame that fright. <laughs> Quick. Okay. So it looks like Will Smith uh, Entertainment Company, the Smith Overbrook Entertainment, will finance and produce a film based on the life of George Zimmerman. No way. Yes. For what? <laughs> They're allegedly going to pay Zimmerman about three point two million consultant fees for the movie. His son, uh, Will's son, Jaden Smith, will play the role of Trayvon Martin, and it looks like Wilmer Val Valderrama is going to play George Zimmerman. Looks like he has to gain some weight to play that role. Too. Yeah, don't do it. Don't do it. They shouldn't even make this movie. Right, that's well, whack. Well, he did say that, you know, this type of event isn't glorified, just like being slave owners wasn't glorified, and they did 12 Years a Slave, and that was a hit. You know, there's a lot of things that go on that aren't really good that they make movies about so this is just another story that well, they this, wanted to this tell. is the problem that i have with it is that they're paying him three million dollars i definitely right. have a problem with that so I w that's I why i say allegedly it. i don't believe that they're going to be paying him that much i wouldn't pay him at all that's what i'm saying and I wait and this is I will smith's company yes. i wouldn't create any revenue for this smith's guy over brick entertainment that would be yeah. a story i could tell after he died right you know what i mean i wouldn't I, i'm not supporting that at all well, it looks like the movie will be in theaters spring 2015. Boo! <laughs> and it, it looks like uh, they finally started um, casting for the NWA movie Straight Outta Compton, the biopic. Right. And Ice Cube's son, O'Shea Jackson Jr., will be playing Ice Cube. So he got the role. He got the role. Um, e. Marcus <laughs> Col Colander will be playing uh, Dr. Dre. And Jason Mitchell will be playing Eazy-E. Really? Yeah. Really. So they, they so they cast it because it's crazy. I seen uh, yeah. seen Little Easy last night, and I was Did asking. He, he actually kind of looks like Easy a little bit. But you know, sometimes In it's not right here. Sometimes it's not always about how they look. It's about mannerism. Just like the James Brown movie that's coming out. He don't look like James Brown. Nothing like him. It's that's all about mannerism. That's the dude that played 42, right? Yeah. I'm not yeah, sure. I think, I think that's the guy yeah. playing uh, and, 42. And okay. Jamie Foxx definitely don't look like Ray Charles. <laughs> so. Right. So she pulled it off, though. Just like the um, little Disney chick. She's going to be playing Aaliyah. Yeah. And a lot of people are upset about that. I was a little upset, upset about that one. Who? I don't know her name. Zendaya? Yes. Really? Yes. Wow. Um, and Yaya is supposed to play... Whitney Houston, yeah, yeah, is from America's Next Top Model. But lost anyway, me. okay, you lost me. Back to the old school new news. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, also, while we're talking about Ice Cube, Twenty Two Jump Street grossed sixty million over the weekend, oh, which is the second highest um, R-rated comedy movie to gross that much. Twenty <laughs> Two. <laughs> 22 Jump Street, yeah, wow. did, 60 million. Did, did Q, is Q like an executive producer on that? So that's his movie. Bang. Well, go ahead, Ice Cube. Two, two in a about. row. And I'd like to say congratulations to Eve. She got married in Aziba to her um, her boyfriend, Maximilian Cooper. They've been together four years, and he's a billionaire. She's winning. Who? Maximilian Cooper. Oh, but who married? Maximilian. Eve. Eve? Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Now that we're gone. 
Mm-hmm. She did that. She sure did. Go on. So they did the ceremony after the gumball, um, after the gumball race, because they met at the gumball race. So they decided just to do the ceremony after the race, and it was on um, beachfront or beachside. And lastly, 50 Cent will be dropping his album Street King Immortal, Immortal <laughs> on <laughs> September 16th. Yeah, right. right. And that's yeah. this week's old school new news on the Going Way Back oh, without, show oh, with my man, Money sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I hit the wrong button. We need to get you a drink or something. No, so no, you no, 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 because I got these claps in the wrong spot. That's I got to put them in the right spot. Well, anyways, we're going to keep it moving. We're going to go to break when we come back. Uh, my first guest of the evening to help us celebrate, because this is a celebration of Tupac's 43rd birthday he would have been 43 yesterday and my good good great friend Layla Steinberg will be joining us right after this break and shout out to V1C hooked us up with the with the dope going way back show t-shirts only you know two I mean? only two I mean we're we gonna get the we're gonna get the full package and we'll pretty much we'll have them up for sale pretty soon so look out for those but this is kind of like what they might look like so you know shout out to V1C we'll be right back Layla, welcome to the show. Hi, man. Again. Hi. I know. That's awesome. I haven't been in radio in years and then twice in one year with you. Now you're just, now you're just you. doing it. <laughs> you're up here. And it's probably a little different because when we when you came, I think it was like our second show. And now we kind of, we a little comfy in here now. That's what's up. And doing our this thing. This is great. But, um, you know, we just saw the that video from the Hologram Tupac performance. And I believe when you came before, I, we didn't really get to talk about that. And I was just wondering, what are your thoughts when you see that? Like, is it? It was strange. We were at Coachella that year. It I mean, was kind of creepy. I was about to say, was it creepy or what? <laughs> I don't know. I I shouldn't say that. I appreciate it. I can say it. It's it fucking creepy. It's, it's just so <laughs> weird. I want to appreciate, you know, art and the many mediums. So it's amazing that we have technology that can do that. But it was weird for me. Right. I so I mean, know. is it something like when I say it is like, is it something that you are like, oh, I can't, I'd, I'd love to see that again, or no, you know, I don't like, think like, I wanted to see it in the first place. And yeah, I, I um, or is it because it was it creepy because it was so much like him, or was it just like it really didn't have the? No, it was just weird. Right. But you know, I'm technology uh, challenged, so yeah. Well, Some stuff is just too much for me. <laughs> is it was it weird because you didn't quite understand how they came up with the concept? No, it was weird or to see this fake kind of larger than life. Yeah, yeah. There. I don't know. I think it's because it's personal for me. I was gonna say, but I, I actually got to see the um, old dirty bastard hologram in the Easy E at the Rock the Bells, and it was kind of creepy and weird to me. And I didn't even. Well, I knew I knew ODB. I saw that too. ODB was my guy, yeah. and I knew Easy, but. I could, I would probably even more so. Right. Well, we were, at, we were at your event last night. So tell everybody, you know, about about the event last night and and about the foundation and everything that you have going on. Yeah, it actually wasn't even my event, but really? I felt well. What happened was seven days ago. I kept saying it was crazy that they could do it that fast. But Professor Armour, mm -hmm. whose home we were in, he's the law professor at SC. He's on my board, okay. and we support each other's work a lot. And a week ago, he said, why aren't we doing something for Pac's birthday? Let's have a party and celebrate. Right. And I was actually at Governor's Ball with Earl. Mm -hmm. So I had no ability to plan anything. And Asher, who created the TAT site, Truth About Tupac, right. I mean, he's got, like, so much. His whole life has just been dedicated to Pac's work. So I called Asher and said, Jody wants to do a fundraiser and a party mm -hmm. honoring Pac and Asher put the whole thing together in a week. Right. So I can't take any credit, but they did throw it as a fundraiser from my organization, aimfortheheart.org, and I just know Pac would love that 25 years later I'm still working in juvenile halls and traveling and doing the work, and so that's what it was about last night. Some of my students performed, some of the people, oh, by the way, the breakdowns will be out tomorrow morning for the movie, casting okay. begins tomorrow. Okay. So. John Singleton, LT Hutton were in the house, you guys, Mosley, and it gave some of the people that want to audition an opportunity to be around people who are involved in the film. So that was great. I heard there was a lot of Tupac. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, so, so <laughs> I, 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 I showed up a little bit late to the party, but as I'm walking through, 
every other dude looked like Tupac. Like, well, yeah, so I just went to the play in New York. I went and right. saw the play. How was that? You know, that was also, I think it was a really important play. Mm -hmm. it, um, it's not a Tupac story, but it's the story of a young man who comes out of prison and the challenges of integrating back into a life that was already messed up. And his whole story is told through Pac's songs and his lyrics and words, mm. so it's really deep. That is dope. S I have a question. Sure. If you don't mind, host. I don't um, mind. <laughs> how would Tupac celebrate his birthday? Like back in the day, what would he do <laughs> on his birthday? Yeah, tell us. Both Gosh. of you guys, and how I would he celebrate? And I actually got to celebrate some birthdays with him. You know, a blunt, a little drink, music, women. Mm -hmm. He really, you know, he loved his birthday. So he would Come go. On. He would go you off. Tell us. <laughs> <laughs> what about I think it's some videotapes floating around out there. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> No, that was somebody else's birthday. <laughs> yeah. All you guys. I didn't participate. Uh, well, I did. I didn't. I really didn't. Nah, which, right, <laughs> you know, it definitely in, in, involved blunts and some, probably some Hennessy at mm -hmm. the time. And, you know, really, back then, um, Tupac wasn't a really heavy drinker. No, he wasn't. He wasn't. One sip. And oh, I, and we can talk about the lightweight. Yeah, because, you know. I used to get on him, and I almost feel responsible for <laughs> turning him into an alcoholic <laughs> influence. Into it. I'm pro I mean, really. I think you influenced a lot of people, though. Because he'd be on his back after, like, a beer or two. <laughs> wow. You know? But that was the thing. Like, he could really smoke. I could really drink. I couldn't really smoke, you know. But, you know, I later on. I couldn't really do either. Huh? I couldn't really do either. Really? <laughs> yeah. I'm all the way lightweight. <laughs> yeah, he used, to, he used to do that. For real. So let's get back on this on this movie. Um, one, how did all those guys know about the, the event yesterday? Well, that's what I'm saying. Asher, Asher, oh, Asher has done a lot to develop the site and the network, and I'm sure he'll be involved in the media piece as far as the marketing and promotions of the movie. Because right. anything Tupac that comes around, he knows before most of us know. Right. Well, <laughs> I'm like, how'd you know that? So that's a question we're gonna say because Asher's coming up in the next segment. Um, but for you, with this, this movie being made, um, from what you know right now, and I'm not sure if, you, if you've even seen or know what the script is about, how is your, one, you know, how do, how do you feel about what you know so far, and then what, what do you hope comes from this? My, and what's your biggest fear, too? That's the my question. prayer is that Pac's story really does tell the story of our generation, of what was going on in everything from social justice to hip-hop to race to everything in this time period that needs to be told. He represents it. My fear is that the story is so big, I don't know how they'll tell the story in an hour and a half. Yeah, I don't know... You know, John rewrote everything, and so I don't even know if I'm in the story. Honestly, I right. don't know. There's a lot of people that'll be cut. Well, they better put me in. You're it. in it. <laughs> I, do, I know that. It. Is there a deadline for the script to be done? Does he it's have a date? Done. Okay. Done. Dang, yeah. You did that I think quick. I'm gonna go read it tomorrow. I was gonna go today, right. but nice. I didn't. Have Who? Say what? Have they cast me yet? You I don't know, know. If there's anybody in the film that will be able to play himself. It would probably be months, so we're um, rooting for you. And, right. And I don't think anybody else stayed exactly like he hasn't aged. I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> and, if, and if I don't play me, then they better get Cooper Gooden Jr. Or or uh, who else could play me? No, they have to be way younger. So probably Billy D. Williams. It's time or for a break. <laughs> That's my job. Not just just <laughs> well, let's take a break because I have some more questions for you. But we're going to take a break much. and we're going to come right back. Um, Asher Underwood for TruthAboutTupac.com will be in the building, in the building with Layla Steinberg. And just joining us, Asher Underwood from TruthAboutTupac.com. How you doing, brother? Good, money, B. Thanks. Now, I got a lot that we want to ask you, but right now we're going to take this call. Teasy. Caller, you're on the air. Where are you calling from? And your name? What we know? My name's Atrin Gregory. Who's this? Hi, Atrin. It's Tan TZ. What's up, Atrin? How are you? Hi, Atrin. Hey, Tan TZ. What's happening, man? What's up? 
It's uh, Layla and Asher Underwood in the building as well. Hey, Layla. What's happening, Asher? Hey, hey. Hi, Adrian. So, Adrian, you're calling to tell Hi. us that you're outside ready to come on in uh-huh. the building, right? <laughs> I said, what, you, what did you say? I said, are you calling us from outside the building saying you're coming up? Yeah, yeah I'm kind of calling you from downstairs. I was running late, so I'll be up there in just a second. I should hang up. Nah, um, no, nah, nah, we got you on the line. So, for those of those those of you who don't know, um, Adrian Gregory, uh, of course, is the original manager of Digital Underground. We were signed to TNT Records, and he also managed Tupac Shakur. So, Adrian, um, give us your your thoughts, and what do you think, in your opinion, that what Tupac would be doing right now if he, you know, if Tupac had made it to his 43rd birthday. What do you think that he would be into? What, where, how do you think that he would be affecting the culture right now? I think, well, I think he'd affect the culture how he always said he wanted to do it through, through the kids. Right. I think he'd have multiple programs for kids. I think they would be art-oriented, but also education-oriented. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think that you know, of course, he would be an A-list actor. Uh, I think he would he would still do what he loves, do, what his foundation is, and what he loves doing, which is music. Mm-hmm. He might not be doing it as much just because you know pop culture being what it is. It's a, it's a young person's game, but I think he'd still be doing it. Okay. Um, now, yeah, that, that's absolutely what I think he'd be doing right now. Now, I don't have. Uh... Well, I should say, um, towards the end when he was, you know, when he was with Death Row, I didn't really <laughs> hang out or talk to him a lot. I talked to him here and there, and I don't know how much communication you had with him at that time. But can you recall um, any of your last conversations with Pac about what he wanted to do moving forward, as far as, um, you know, because I, you know, one of the last conversations I had with him, he did tell me that eventually he wanted to have his own label and kind of move away and do his own thing. So did he talk to you about any of that? Well, my, my last conversations I had with Tupac was when he was still in Danamora. Okay. Um, I, I, I never saw him after Danamora. I think you re, you remember when, um, what video was that, Mun, that he, he was supposed to come down to? Oh, um, oregano flow? I think it was oreg- oregano flow, right? He came, he came, he showed up. Yeah, and yeah, I know he showed up, but I, we remember we waited all day, and I had left to go have lunch. Okay. And in between that time is when um, he showed up, and by the time I got back, mm-hmm. he, he had left. But my last conversation with him was um, in Danamora. Right. And, you know, the same thing. See, you know, he talked... He just talked about having his own label. He talked about he talked a lot about kids at that time. You know, especially being where he was, you know, locked up. Obviously, you know, children were a lot on his mind and their and their upbringing and what he could do to keep them from being where he was. You know, even though, of course, you know, I don't think he should have been in there, and most of us don't. Right. Um, that you know, he wanted to do everything he could. To, to help children. I mean, that's that's really what he was all about. Even even at his young age, he was, right. he was all about kids. Okay. And speaking of kids, you know, being the manager, has did Pac ever like call you like, "Hey, yo, Asher, I need three hundred dollars all the time <laughs> to get rid of something." He, he said, "Say that again." Oh. Has has Tupac? Have you ever got that call from Tupac saying he got somebody pregnant and he needed he needed some help? <laughs> you know, I I don't recall ever getting that call in that way. <laughs> Did you like it? No. Don't ask me questions. Uh, I right thought now. she just said all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Three hundred dollars. Let me finish help, help, the statement. Help me out here because you know we we have to do we have to have some protection here. So. And it, sometimes he didn't use that protection. I'm sure he, he I mean, you know. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just keep it at that. Yeah, I mean, because, you know, being that young, nobody was nobody was always ready. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And it's, yeah. it, it, it happens. But I just, it's just strange to me that I've, I've never heard of it because I know that so many women liked him and he liked so many women that I was just assuming that there had to be some episode 
like that? You know, you know. Quite honestly, though, I, I don't know. I don't know of one. No, so I, I've never had that experience with him. Um, now, whether that happened or not, I right. can't tell you. But you know, he's never made that phone call to me. Well, you got truth about Tupac in the house. You know, Asher's going to do his research. <laughs> right, Asher, Asher's already on the database. He's recalling it. <laughs> Word up. Well, well, well like, like, you know, it won't it won't ever come out of my mouth that that I got that phone call. So. And um, it'll, it'll ne- never come out of the mouth of anyone in my office, though, so, or that was in my <laughs> office at the time. You plead the fifth, huh? <laughs> no, I'm not pleading the fifth. I just never got the phone call. Okay, 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 okay. We're going to hook you up to a lie detector test next time you in town. <laughs> right. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, Atrian, um, how long are you in town for? I'm in town till uh, Friday. Okay. Well, we're going to catch up with you because, you know, we have some other callers, and I I want to talk to Asher a little bit, but I appreciate you calling in, and we'll catch up. We'll hook up later. Bye, Adrian. See ya. All right. All right. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. That's what's up. So, Asher. What's up? What's going on with you, brother? Man, just chilling. Now. Glad to be here. I've I've always been curious to, you know, because I've I've enjoyed these sites, you know, and shout out to... uh, J Mix at TupacNation.net and BombFirst.com and you know all the the sites and Machiavelli portals, board, Machiavelli Tupac board, Forum, everybody, uh, everybody, you know, because they they definitely keep keep them alive, you mm-hmm. know what I mean. But as someone that um, you know runs one of those sites, one, how do you have the time? And then two, you know, what drove you to to really just dedicate your life? Mm. Well, the uh the inspiration part is probably a longer story. So, mm-hmm. you know, Pac inspired me and to have a whole a whole long documentary story about that. But um, in terms of the website, it's been about four years now since Truth About Tupac was created. Right. Uh, building it was uh, how I learned how to build websites uh-huh. and uh, work in social media and things of that nature. So. It was really um, just a part of a mission of answering certain questions and doing research and actually just using the internet as a database, using the website as a database. Mm -hmm. So one thing that's really important to know is that it's not just me that built Truth About Tupac or built the site, but there's been so many homies and comrades and soldiers worldwide that's part of it, you know, everybody from... Uh, you know, the colonel right now, Daniel Lito, that's always keeping the Instagram popping, to the homie Sean Sparks, who's one of the coldest researchers in the game, to people like Jay Mix and people like Machiavelli Board that are also contributors on Truth About Tupac. So, you know, it's um it's just a, it's just like a worldwide it's a worldwide Doug Love thing, I guess. Yeah, and, you know? I, and I just wanna say <clears throat> from you know, someone that was involved in Pac's life that mm-hmm. You know, I want to thank you, and I appreciate the fact that you guys keep him alive in that way. And, it, you know, it's always interesting to me. It's like, you know, because Pop was, what was he, how was he, 25, 26? 25. It's like, how much can you know about about somebody? You know what I mean? Right? No, what I'm saying is, like, <laughs> well, like say 20 years from now, the site got, you know, God willing, it'll still be happening. But sure. how much more information can you find out about a guy? Well, there's a... There's a few things that just, you know, with respect to all the sites out there, um, that's a little different about what this website is about and what the movement is about. Okay. It is a movement. So, like, you know, we just hit the Instagram thing, you know, and whatever's next, we're going to be on that. So um, we just use whatever channels are available, and we always drive traffic back to the website, which is something that we teach um, through our uh, Evolving Graphics dot com, which is our web and graphic design company, and we do social media. So we also about teaching young people and people who are aspiring to be business in the business in the industry and utilize the internet how to utilize it so just to say in regards to Pac um, I did do my whole undergraduate thesis at the University of Washington on Tupac it was one of the earliest uh, classes shouts out to everybody in Seattle on the 206 uh, Fresh Coast we studied Pac from multiple perspectives so not just the music or not just what influenced Pac but what are the different threads and things that he was pulling out of his music from Sun Tzu to Machiavelli to things where that's how I found Layla because um, you know Pac there's a lot of like metaphysics and like esoteric 
information and codes that he's putting out through his music. Okay. So the, it goes way deeper than just Pac on that note. Not to cut you off, we got to take a break. Sure. We'll come back, we'll, we'll talk more of it. Cool. Right here with Layla Steinberg, Asher Underwood, right here on the Going Way Back Show .com. Video from Not Cool. What's up, man? How you doing? Good. What's up? <laughs> Man, that, that was kind of hot right there. Now, Naiku, you are the son of Layla Steinberg. What's, what's your rap name? Naiku. Just Naiku? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You ain't got Naiku the Magnificent or Naiku the, the Great? I know, right? Naiku. The, <laughs> the ingenious. Now, we, I want to I ask you about that video. Um, but first, we, we got a caller on the line. Cletus Mack, are you on the line? What's up with it? What up, Clee? How you doing, brother? Hey, Clee. So, Clee. Oh, um, easy. I, I asked you to call in because I wanted you to just give us a, a, a interesting or a funny story of just your time being with Tupac and just hanging out with him. You know, we were talking about how he celebrated his birthday, and we all know how he celebrated other people's birthdays. <laughs> but, oh, Lord. <laughs> right, just just give us one of those good stories because you got a million of them. I, I give a good story. One, one night, we was, at, um, we was at your crib over by the lake. And Pac lived on the other side of the lake. Right. So what happened was, it was my uncle Greg's birthday. Mm. <laughs> Matter of fact, we had just we had just walked into Walgreens. We had just bought a a, a half a gallon of uh, a Seagrams. Right. And Pac was like, "What y'all doing? What y'all doing?" He's like, we, "We like we just got a half a gallon of Seagrams. What's up?" He's like, "I just bought a half a gallon of Seagrams too." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it was like, "Oh, uh, like it's on," and the Pac, you know. Pac ain't never really had a hookup. Pac just always got hooked up. <laughs> Pac was like, this time I'm doing all the hookup, everything. I got I got the drink. We about to set it out for Greg for his birthday. We about to set it out. Mm -hmm. And and, well, at, and well, at what time was this? This was before Juice. This was, he, when he had an apartment by yeah. the lake. So just to kind of set it up, he wasn't really like huge or popping like that at the time. Nah, he was living in an apartment over there by the lake. He was, he was just starting to pop. Okay. He was popping. He was just starting. Was to he in the off. penthouse? No. No, nah, he wasn't in the penthouse. Oh. Okay. Pardon me. So finish. Got the boulevard. <laughs> Go ahead and finish. He was on Mac. Now I said finish. What you say? I said go ahead and finish the story. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, he went. He got girls come. They all had like little matching toolboxes with all kind of party favors inside of them, and all the party favors matched. Colors they was wearing and it was real wild. He put it what out. What do you mean party birthday. favors? I mean. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean party favors? What do you mean? I mean, I think a video actually ended up slipping out with that night. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> I was going to say, I you, gotta, I, you gotta catch the video, TMZ, baby. I didn't know if you realized that she was explaining that videotape, but yeah. So, um, and real quick, because um, we, we, we got, we're going to have to move and I want to talk to Naiku for a minute, but just really quick, just uh, tell the people just your, your lasting um, impression, what, what pot left you with? My last impression? Last time I seen Pac was at the Regano Flow video. Okay. And uh, he walked in and he had on a black suit with this Versace shirt under it. Right. And as soon as I seen him, I just fell out. <laughs> like, I just started laughing. Okay. And he pulled me over to the corner and he's like, man, let me talk to you. I was and he's like, man, the OG got at me while I was in jail. And he told me about the way I dress. And he told me I need to start addressing the way I dress. And he's like, because people treat you the way you look. Hmm. You look like you don't have anything. They're going to treat you like they don't want to give you anything. And he's like, the OG taught me that. And since I changed up my dress, they changed it a whole lot. So and that's kind of how you changed up your dress. Yeah. I mean, I learned. I listened. And Cletus I, Mack is born. I, I ain't afraid to listen to good advice. It works. Well, that's a good story. So, Cletus, we're going to run. I appreciate the call. Thanks for calling. Oh, you know it. All right, man. All right, y'all. Be good. Okay. Not right, cool. Yeah. So tell us about the video. Um, now, am I am I mistaken? Did you actually direct the video as well? Yeah, it was a joint project um, with Asher and me. Okay. And I was directing it, um, and me and Asher edited it, um, did a lot of work on it. But so, and it you was, produced the track as well? 
No, I didn't produce the track. Really? Yeah. Who? It was Geo. From Geo. Chef Music. Yeah. All right. So what's the, what's the whole um, the meaning behind the song? What are you trying to get across? What's the message? Uh, I actually I wrote the song about a year and a half ago or a year ago, mm -hmm. and at the time I was listening to a lot of hip hop music. I was mm -hmm. listening to a lot of Nas and Jay Z. And a lot of um, old school Wu Tang and all that. It definitely and comes across. Yeah, um, and so I started writing really, and I was looking at different, different like parts of music, and I want to go on a more positive route, like okay. get my example through to people, mm -hmm. and um, my whole point on the song was to reach um, kids my age and a lot of older pe kids my age who haven't made the wrong choices yet, but to yes. look at look at people who have already made the wrong choices and just look at how their life is going so they don't end up like them. Right, mm -hmm. so yeah. just get it right before yeah. you end up pretty much messed up somewhere. Now, I heard you mention all these groups that you like. Were you a Tupac fan growing yeah. up? Really? Okay. I mean, because it could go two ways. You could be like, man, I'm sick of everybody always talking to my mama about Tupac. No, or you could I just was. Be, huh? I was, but I, I wasn't really... You sick I of that shit, it, right? I kept it low. You like, kept it low? <laughs> yeah. I didn't so really you, talk so about is this it, the first time your mom is hearing that you like sick of it? No, I'm not. I'm not sick of it. I, I mean, but it had to be sickening. Yeah, what, yeah. What, what, what was the sickening part of it? What, what when people would come up to my mom and like try to take pictures. Oh, you managed to fuck, and I was just, I was getting sick of that. Like everyone. And you like this dude ain't even here. Yeah. <laughs> like he <laughs> seemed like a quiet kid though. Get the fuck yeah. out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Move it. Well, tell me this. From I'm sure you that your mother and just people around have shared information about Tupac and what he was about and how he was and of course you've seen all the images and, and heard the music. What, if any, um, lessons have you learned from his music and his life? Uh, well, my my mom didn't really talk about Tupac that much. She didn't want like like me and my sisters or anything to be a part of any of that. Right. But she told me stories sometimes, but I wasn't really in the mix with, like, the Tupac stuff, and I hated going to the events that she was going to. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say the something I learned from him. Right. Uh, I didn't, I never really paid attention to, I never really learned anything, but I understood he was, like, he had a lot of pain in the struggle, and he, he was um, he was looking at he was he was exposing a lot of stuff and like I his chest, <laughs> <laughs> stomach. <laughs> so you learned not to get tattoos no. from Tupac. <laughs> Just exposing the life he lived in general. Well, I can dig it, man. Well, I I, I appreciate all of you guys coming through. I'm gonna go down the line and. and Give everybody your social media where they can find you really and quick. where they could, you know, check out the videos and everything. Really uh, quick. Instagram, NYKUU. And you can find my video on NYKU.co or you can go on YouTube and look up Traffic by Naiku, NYKU. Okay. Pretty much on yeah. All right, Layla. I'm going to try this again. Thanks, you guys. Just anybody tuning in, we love you. You can find my website, aimfortheheart.org. If you're aiming, you may as well get the heart. Right. And um, my Instagram, Layla underscore Steinberg. And, yeah, thanks. Asher. Asher. Yes. Give find, find all the information where they Truth can find Truth about Tupac.com. Check out our graphic design, evolvinggraphics.com, and check out the new site we just launched, wakeuphiphop.com. What about Instagram and Twitter? Oh, uh, it's all the same. Asher Underwood at Asher Underwood at Truth About Tupac at Wake Up Hip Hop. Okay. Time Teasy? Um, T O N underscore T E E Z Y. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, The Going Way Back Show. Money, uh, always. <laughs> Are always at uh, Instagram at, at Always In Your Ear on Twitter. And of course, you can find me on all social media at MoneyB69. You can follow the show specifically on Twitter at Going Way Back Show. Please subscribe to the Going Way Back Show YouTube channel and check out archived ep episodes of the podcast at GoingWayBackShow.com. I want to thank all of my guests. I appreciate you guys taking the time to come out and share the stories and the information with us. And until next time, people, be, be easy. easy. It's the Going Way Back Show with Money B. 
classic hip hop, raw and uncut. Thanks for visiting the Going Way Back Show channel. Make sure you rate, comment, and subscribe and click that like button.